Matthew 2023 that says that nobody can become anything until God gives him the ability. The Defense of the Gospel, the official partners of Vision Matthew 2023. It's powerful. The Bible said the way that sin made right to a man, the end may be death. death. Inspiring. God does not allow us, does not even permit us that somebody comes and just teach you a thing and you do not also go back, go back to back check the scripture. Exactly. Inciting. Because he is eternally a loving God. So lifting. And fight the Amalek. And he went, told him, it was the failure of Saul that made Saul to be rejected. Bible focus program you can't afford to me. They speak out when anything happens in the in the country on the state. They still speak out. Said what you are doing is bad. Uh, Elijah told uh, uh, Ahab. What you are doing is bad. The defense of the gospel, an interdenominational TV and radio program that features seasoned gospel ministers with the aim of providing answers to current social, political, and spiritual issues and the role of the church, sponsored by Remedy for Victims of Religious Persecution and Discrimination, RVRPND. Airing live on AKBC TV and radio and on Star Times Channel 113. Time is 2 p.m. every Thursday. Repeat broadcast on Saturdays and on AKBC Radio by 4 p.m. and AKBC TV by 5 p.m. Watch live on Facebook at The Defense of the Gospel and on YouTube at G247 TV. Contact information, WhatsApp 0913-510-5983. The Defense of the Gospel. The official partners of Vision Matthew 2023. Lovely, wonderful, beautiful afternoon it is, and a warm welcome to the program, The Defense of the Gospel. Well, we are coming a little bit behind schedule today, and I um, want to implore you to please understand with us uh, these things do happen. One of those things you might classify as some you know classified reasons but then we are happy to join you back and same here that you're also there for us today it is no more a very interesting thing to talk about what's a reality as it is because the season is right here this is one of the most important season in the christian calendar talk about the easter season as a matter of fact we'll be having tomorrow as good friday and of course you know the reason why but then does that reason mean anything to you? Are you still seeing him talking about the Christ Savior as a reason for this season? Well, we'll bring you the topic, the unity of the church part two in this Easter period. And we'd we'll like to take a look at how the church is united, especially at times like this. Or are we really united? It is my pleasure to welcome you on board the program. My name is Eto Ikon. And as always, I have my distinguished guests, the very revered men of God, who are going to do justice to this topic today. First, let's meet the man that was here last week. I'm talking about the senior pastor, Cheryl Foundation Apostolic Christian Ministry, coming all the way from Ikonic Bene, right here in Akwabasi Home State. Let's meet Pastor Victor Ukobasi, man of God, and welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. We're glad that you're able to make it. Glory to God. All right. <laughs> and um, we also have this time another senior pastor. He's been here. He's always a part of the family. But I think this year he just came in once. And we're glad we could be able to bring him again. As made the senior pastor of Freedom Foundation Ministry. Also from Econic Bene. Just like I said, today is for Econic Bene. As welcome, <laughs> Reverend Ubo Umo. One of you, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And happy Easter to all of you out there. God bless you. Okay. So we get started. Now, when we talk about Easter, a lot of people see Easter as only a time to reflect on Christ's crucifixion. That's just that. So, uh -huh, I know now he was crucified, so, don't, so what? Well, <laughs> we're going to talk about so many things today about Easter. So, um, take a look at Easter, men of God. And um, we know it begins with Christ's crucifixion, the death on the cross, his resurrection, and of course, his place as it is today. Someone might ask, well, that was for Christ. He had finished his work on earth. Does that mean anything to the unity of the church? Does that mean anything to church as it were? 
give us an understanding of how what it means for the church to be united especially at times like this yeah well um the death of christ his sufferings his death his burial his resurrection and ascension mm. that's what we are marking yes that's what we call easter but it's relevant to us first because his death according to scriptures was to take away our sins and to give us a new life mm. his resurrection as the the first fruit of those that are resurrected or that will resurrect mm. is also to give us life the bible tells us in um, first corinthians chapter 15 verse 17 it says if christ be not raised your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sin in other words without the death of jesus christ and his resurrection our preaching is in vain our faith is in vain everything we are doing that has to do with church is all in vain so it's it is the life is the life wire of the christian faith is the foundation of the christian faith is the hope of the christian faith that that life does not end in the grave because jesus christ rose we are we have the hope that blessed hope that we have life the bible tells us that god has given us eternal life everlasting life and that this life is in christ it now says that he that has jesus christ has life praise god so that's what we we mark easter for and yes easter brings unity to the church because every church is marking easter in one way or the other mm. every church every church remembers that jesus christ suffered and died and that jesus christ rose again he's not in the grave he's not in the cross mm. he is resurrected and every church remembers the savior that he died and that he rose again to give us life and to give us everlasting life it's supposed to be every church but we still have some churches that do not reflect that and they don't see anything about it they feel it's just a normal day even if they don't mark mm. the season mm. they believe that christ died beautiful that's let why me, they are church let me go to pastor <laughs> <Okuma. Yes. laughs> man of god you heard that <laughs> and uh, no doubt and no doubt i don't think there's any christian that would deny the fact that easter is real in his or her life but the, the, the fact remains, how united are we? Yeah. The, the unity of the church is not even possible without the understanding of Easter. Hmm. Why am I saying that? Easter as it were, is, is, is Christianity. Without Easter, without the resurrection, Christianity would have been like any other religion. What distinguishes Christianity from every other religion is Easter. Not as a ceremony, but as a documentary even in history of mankind that once upon a time a man came in the likeness of flesh to show us the way to the father it's like coming to give us the principles like we say mathematics made simple english made simple physics made simple yeah. jesus came to simplify the law because in him everything that's about god resides and so the message of easter is like the foundation of the testament because go tell his disciples and peter didn't come pre-easter mm -hmm. it came upon easter mm -hmm. and so any denomination or christian that imbibes the bible yeah. as the central truth and the final authority mm -hmm. 
in the instrument or, or article of our worship will find it easy to be at peace and at oneness and in one with every other person that believes the same thing. So in essence, Easter is a unifying um, what do I call that? A unifying belief. A unifying belief, a unifying platform for all believers. So once again, happy Easter in advance. You, you talked about uh, the body of Christ being stapled on the fact that Easter is the very platform that made us to be united, right? And that um, without this, then absolutely we don't have any reason to be together, to be as a church mm -hmm. and one body. Now I'd like to find out, apart from the fact that Christ came to die, and uh, today we have him you know, in charge of our affairs, speaking for us, interceding for us, and of course, helping us to grow in him and have our being, as the Bible says. How should the church unite in, in, in the fact that even though we have Easter as it is right now, Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary, and is the church still reflecting that very essence of his death as we are? Do you think this is happening? And if not, how and what should we do in this situation? The, what is largely responsible for the present state of the church that is not exactly or a, a, a good way off the expectation of the master is our lack of understanding of John Gospel chapter 8 and verse 32. Mm. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. People celebrate Easter without knowing the truth. Just like the people in the days of Paul had a temple in Athens talking about an unknown God. Mm -hmm. So you will see that one person believes and celebrates it some other even people who celebrate it the traditional way mm. but it would masquerade and all that some into uh, debauchery some into immorality or you know but if they knew that easter is about salvation easter is about purity easter is about truth easter about is about agape easter is about the fear and the reverence of God. And then we mind the same thing and we practice the same thing and we say the same thing that will bring strength to the church in unity. But the fact that largely uh, Christianity has become more or less transactional. What do I mean? Whoever wins soul is wise is to tell people about the, the message of Easter. Tell them, you know, before Easter, the disciples scattered. They ran away, they were afraid. They were, you know, apprehensive. What is going to happen to us? But Easter brought hope. He said, go and tell them there is hope. Go and tell them that light shines in darkness, that uh, darkness cannot comprehend it. It's after Easter we have the Pentecost. Mm. We have boldness and without microphone to amplify the message. 3,000 souls were saved. 5,000 souls were saved. Are we in this generation following in the footsteps of the early apostles? Because now it should be what I'm saying about tra uh, transactional. My brother is here, a very erudite man of God. He will allude to what I'm saying. Very few focus today on evangelism. The number of souls won, making men to know the truth so that we can have a good society. And then still make it to heaven in eternity. 
But now, what we largely major on is a car, a wife, a husband, a state. But the Bible makes us to understand these are things that divide the church. Because when we think that gain is godliness, it's a mistake. Gain is not godliness. The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. But it's that that man does the will of God. In the things are many gettings. Do we get understanding about Easter? Do we get understanding about the truth? Do we get understanding about agape love? Do we get understanding about the principles of the narrow way? Because broad is the way. We can celebrate it anyway. I mean, yet to rob on mama. No. Let there be understanding that there is what? How the Lord wants the services and our lives to be conducted. Okay. okay. Let, let, you want to add something? Yeah, yes. I, I want to add to that because okay. Easter is supposed to unite the church. Yes. Yeah. Um, the sacrifice was made for all of us. Yeah. Not just for one church. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 like God's not a particular denomination. No, no, no. It, no. It, it, that's that is a unifying factor. Mm. Yeah, that the same Lord died for all, all of us. us. That's right. Thank you. It's the same blood for all of us. Hallelujah. The same sacrifice Hallelujah. for all of us. Hallelujah. The same salvation for all of us. Hallelujah. Now the same Spirit is planted in all of us. Hallelujah. And we are all going to the same heaven. Mm -hmm. Now this is supposed to unify us. Now. God's word will say in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse um, twelve and fourteen, that we are of one body, but different parts. That's right. That's one right. One body. Yeah. Different parts. Yeah. One body, one, mm. and that body is Christ. Christ. One body, like like uh, Paul wrote. Some say I am of Paul. Paul. Some say I am of, of Apollos. Apollos. Some say I am of Sephar. Mm -hmm. Some say I am of Christ. Mm -hmm. He now has his Christ divided. divided. <laughs> it's not the same Christ. Yeah. The sacrifice was made for all of us. So Easter is supposed to, if we understand Easter, Easter. then it is supposed to unify us, That's bring right. us together as one. Praise God. Assuming Hallelujah. we are not united, assuming yes. we have so much disintegration, so much disharmony, so much disunity, and all of that. In the body of Christ, perhaps because maybe, like the man of God said, whoever wins soul is wise. Mm. I want to win souls and begin my church and have thousands, five thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand capacity and all of that. In order for me to be able to build schools and still encourage the work of God and all of that, mm. buy more cars, reflects you know wealth because I'm a child of God and all of that. Now, how can we salvage the church from degenerating to that manner? especially now that we have come to realize that this is a season we should reflect and then bounce yeah. back you know we we say this every day that we should stop seeing ourselves as different that you belong to one church i belong to another church just a denomination does not mean that we are not one the problem is okay i will give you an example luke chapter 9 verse 49 and 50 the disciples saw a man casting out demons yeah. and they wanted to stop the man yeah and they said crazy he's not in our church that's he's right. not for us that's why right. should be between that yeah Jesus Christ said no that he is not in our church our camp does not mean he is not for us it doesn't mean so that he is not in our church does not mean he is not of Christ so I may be of Bible church and you are of apostolic church you may not be in my camp, but that does not make us different. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Now, i like to read something very, very unique in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Watch this. It says, Now there are diversities of gift, but the same, 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 same spirit. spirit. Watch the word same. 5 says, There are differences of administration, administration. but the same, again, Lord, same Lord. He now says there are diversities of operations, but the same God, same God. We need to see ourselves as same. 
no matter the man of God, can I interrupt you a bit? Praise God. Yeah. Now I want to end it here in verse. I love, I love, I love verse nine. It says to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same spirit. Is it this, this thing that makes us feel that we are not one? Mm. Is a problem. So to to handle that, we must start seeing ourselves as one. Yeah. What I wanted to add was that I've been seeing these, and but immediately you we read it. The word administration, mm. God magnifies to me a denomination. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Administration. That's the way you do the practice yes mm -hmm. the practice yes and the way the you practices. did the, the practice, the practice yeah. may be different from the way i do the practice mm -hmm. but provided we follow the same principle mm -hmm. because principle is the same principle in this case is the truth that is the christ mm -hmm. the truth again that points us to easter mm -hmm. the, the dead and resurrection mm -hmm. yes but mm. how we administer it mm. is by our understanding. Mm. And that is what I call the methods. Methods may differ, but yes. principles are the same. Are the same. The truth is the same. Mm. The message is the same. Yeah. The message is the always message the same. Must be central. Yeah. Yes. So would one ask now and say, with all of this, can we therefore say that this Easter is a true reflection of the unity of the church? Yes, I would say so. Why? I will say so because I have not seen yet a church that does not preach the cross. If they don't preach it directly, mm. they preach it indirectly. Some of them even have the symbol of the cross. That is still saying mm. that Jesus Christ like. <laughs> <laughs> even if they don't preach it, they still believe mm. that Christ the Son of God died. died and resurrected. Yes. Mm. So any belief, any practice, any message that has to do with the Son of God was sent as a sacrifice to die in our place. It is substitution. He took our, our place. place. We couldn't pay for our sins. Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't. The wages of sin is dead. We could not pay for our sins. God had to pay for our sin by sending His, his Son. So, mm. To pay for our sin. He took our place and died for us. And then he now gave us life and declared us righteous. Declared us free from sin and righteous. And then now gave us eternal life. That's he right. gave us access to God. Mm -hmm. Gave us peace with God. Mm -hmm. Gave us joy. Praise God. Now, yeah. there is no church that does not preach something around that. There's no church. Mm. No matter what you preach, you must preach the cross. In one way or the other, you must preach forgiveness of sin. You must preach him, even if you preach healing. That's the cross. That is the cross, because by his stripes we were healed. That's the cross. You preach deliverance. That's the cross. First Corinthians one verse eighteen. He has delivered us and translated us to the kingdom of his son. That is the cross. So whatsoever you preach, it has something to do with what Christ had done, the finished work of Christ on the cross restoring man to god that is still the cross reconciliation that is still the cross so yes the cross is that unifies us it's, it's central do you allude to that or you have something different i allude to that but i will um, just add something slightly mm. um the perspective through which you come is the pr perspective that should be universal but unfortunately, some of us still think Christ alone is not sufficient. And we get into extra Christ's activities. We get into Christ plus. <laughs> and we forget that as many as receive him, to them gave the power and that power is the ultimate power 
By the way, I'd like you to go back to that class. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had. <laughs> Expansion. <laughs> Just let us know. I'll I'll say doing that. Class I'll say say it, it sounds like a formula. <laughs> In case you know what we don't know, help us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. See, when Jesus went to the cross, which is still about Easter, mm -hmm. the final thing before he breathed his last was it is finished. 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 Yeah. Whatever be the burden of man is finished. Yeah. Whatever be the captivity is finished. Yeah. Whatever be the imprisonment, whatever be the demands of sin is finished. In other words, whatever debt we owed, Christ as by paid. his death as paid. As paid. But some people don't believe that is sufficient and that's so that's right they now go and bring right. either tradition that's right or voodoo that's right or witchcraft to add to because i know something and add to Christ. And add to Christ. Does that work? Because Christ says no. he is a jealous God. It doesn't work. It, no. It, it can be no. existing in the same habitation with them. You see, not that it will work, but it's, it can be a practice. Can be practiced. And it is practiced. Bring this uh, Apostle Obam will lay hands on a sick and pray. Another person will lay hands on the sick and say, No, bring the white cock. Good. That's that's where I, that's what I was about to say. Okay, that is the plus. Mm. As though the blood of the Christ was, that enough? was, that was enough? not enough. Yeah. You may uh, That's what I was about to say. Mm. I think what he means by Christ plus is this. Jesus Christ became the final sacrifice. Yeah. But some people are still sacrificing. Yeah, that's where the Christ must comes because Christ became the end of all sacrifices, Ultimate. rams, goats, chicken, all those things, and then Christ also became the the last of the price we pay. Mm -hmm. we, we people are not supposed to be paying prices again, again. Uh, paying prices for prayers, for healing, mm -hmm. for counseling. Yeah, yeah. So when we bring in those things. We, that's where Extraneous I quote him, factors. Christ plus. plus. That, that could have been based on the fact that it's, it's because of unbelief that made that to happen. But what a situation. What about a situation where we have the church actually going to this practice? What do we say to that? That's why the fact that Christ came and died as it is and had paid the final price. That's where the man of God was talking about the truth, knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. That is a clear sign of ignorance. Ignorance. That is clearly ignorance in display they do not know what christ had done you see when a but man they, they operate as, as the body of christ but i mean yeah, the church it, it, but it doesn't, as it doesn't not the bible mean. said uh, uh they mean. having a form of godliness but the denying the, nine, the power uh, they don't know hmm. they don't learn they don't read they don't they study don't. yeah so they just get it you know some of them were into traditional practices yeah and then they bring it to church carry over and some of these pastors were never born again. They never had an encounter, encounter. with the cross. See, yeah. Once a pastor has an encounter with the cross, he wants to know more. Mm -hmm. Like Paul had an encounter with Christ. You see, the, the, his, his desire to learn, his appetite to know more of Christ, and yeah. know him, he yeah. is always wanting to know. Yeah. And when you want to know, you will know. The Holy Ghost will help you to know. But you see, when, when a pastor goes into ministry and does not take pains to know. He brings in practices that are not consistent with God's word. And then it is still church. Yeah. But you go in there and it is different from the gospel. The gospel. Someone called last edition of the program when man of God made a statement. He said something about a man of God being a preacher, but he's not born again. Mm. And I asked, they said, is that possible? Then someone called. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's possible. And then someone. Yeah, it's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. Fine. So someone called and said, uh, What is the Christian body, those that are in charge, 
and you know that is, that are guarded with the responsibility of taking care. I mean, the blocks mm. of these churches. Mm. What are they doing about such situation? So one might be asked to, you know, forced to ask now and say, in this situation, despite the fact that we have citizens like this, which is very important in the Christian, the life of a Christian, mm. and we still have churches that exist in that, you know, mm. uh, form, and we still have pastors who are not born again. What can we do? What would you advise them right now as it is? Well, unfortunately, in our society where we are now, mm. little is done about that. Yeah. yeah. Very little. Yes. That's the truth. So we should leave it for the honor of the church. Yeah. Well, what I am seeing that we, we are doing, fathers are doing, mm. is they, they ostracize them. They, they keep them away. They don't allow them to come in and mingle with others. That's what I've seen they have done. But to try to shut them down, uh, I don't think it's... it's that really, is, what you mean there is that they are delisted the from... The, yes, they are, they the, are the blocks. blacklisted. They are They're not blocks. allowed to come in to associations of other churches. Yeah, they are kept away. Hmm. Yeah, but, but to go to shut them down, but that does not cure the damage. You, you, yeah, that's why I said that little is done. <laughs> yeah. And little can be done. And that's why we are here. So but in this situation now, what can we say? Because that's that's the more reason one of the reasons we are here. Yeah. Like, uh, what to we create this awareness and what we can do is, yes, is mm. to create the awareness, awareness yeah. enlighten the people, the masses, teach the truth, bring the truth to light. Yeah. Bring the truth about falsehood about reality, about what should be, what the Bible says, what the gospel really entails. And then when you bring the truth out, the people will see the falsehood. Yeah, because I've seen things like that where you start teaching the truth and the people listen to the truth. And once the truth comes, the truth itself, you see, when you on the light, light. the light is like the, the like truth. Mm -hmm. It outshines everywhere. It humbles. Darkness the cannot struggle with it. Yes. And then when anybody hears the truth, he will know that this is the truth. This is not the truth. So that's what we can do. Teach the truth. Bring it to the TV, to the radio, to everywhere we can bring it so that the people will hear the truth and be free from darkness. So, Madam God, what's, what's your take on that? Do you think our proposed uh, blocks are doing enough to keep the church in unity? Uh, the unity must be unity of purpose. <laughs> yeah. And that purpose must be to please God. But um, as we speak, there's a lot of room for improvement. The fathers have tried, some people have been ostracized, uh, some uh, the right hand of fellowship has been withdrawn from. But, you know, it shouldn't stop there. Even in scriptures, the Bible talks about a man that was preaching, but he didn't have the depth. It was when Barnabas saw him, they brought him to Barnabas. He had zeal, but not according to knowledge. Yeah. So Barnabas had to now teach him the true gospel, the true ways of the Lord, mm. to add to his zeal so that he will have zeal according to knowledge, okay. yeah. but not zeal without knowledge. Mm. So what the blocks are doing now, what they should do is that in love, We should bring them close. Teach them. If they are ta teachable. That's one thing. If they are teachable. Teachable. Because they, what, we, what we are having, the, the liberty in, Christian, in Christianity is too large. Because uh, anybody can wake up and call himself a pastor. <laughs> and owns a church. And owns a church. And, and nobody, yeah. you know, Puts him to the crucibles. Mm. Nobody finds out whether he knows what is affirming or what is disputing. Mm. Provided he has resources mm. to push what he, what he wants to, to do. A 
manipulate things through. And manipulate things. It shouldn't be. The fathers should be able to call a meeting. In fact, if there be reports, there should be a monitoring group to make sure that when they go, go around, find where these errors exist mm. and they're not hidden. Mm. They're commonplace. Take note, take statistics, and then, as it were, report at the apostles' feet. And then let, you know, invitations be made, and then these people are brought together for a reasoning. Some are doing it out of sheer ignorance. Yeah, yeah. Some are doing it out of a carryover. And then you see where the use of a thing, the value of a thing is not known. Abuse, abuse becomes abuse. inevitable. You know, God created man and put spirit, you know, the, his spirit in man. To connect, that's what we call the conscience. If you find out in the about priesthood, for instance, either they are channeled in the right direction or in the wrong direction, like uh, sorcery and all that, it could be the right priesthood if they are brought to light. Paul said concerning zeal, persecuting the church, but that was in a negative form. When that zeal was brought into light, you know, Paul was the greatest of the apostles that lived. So we need teachers, we need mentors, we need, you know, it's, it, it calls for patience, for the fathers to be patient enough to correct the rot. Because if we allow it, it's festering and it's, bro you know, is uh, uh, how do I call it, expanding the cleavages of disunity in the body. Okay, when, when we come back, because we are due for break, when we come back, we'll certainly will find out if these leaders of the church are doing this, and then the fathers are also trying their best to, you know, get these things corrected. What about the followers? Is it as a result of ignorance, like you said, or is it because they feel actions are happening here and they're not happening there, so they should follow up? the actions, and then get what they want <laughs> in quick succession. So when we come back, we'll find out why that is possible. And that's why it is transi transactional, Christi <laughs> transactional <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> so when we come back, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yes. Before we open the phone lines, you just join us in the program is still the defense of the gospel. And of course, today we are reflecting the season, talking about Easter season. You can hear my men of God laughing and having fun. Easter season, and the reason why the church should stay united. Join us when we come back from the break. Our lines will be open so you can join us and I'll call as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of the Father. Matthew chapter 20 verses 23. Vision Matthew 2023 is an interdenominational TV and radio program featuring seasoned gospel ministers and Christian leaders within and outside Aquaibum with the aim of positioning the body of Christ to play our expected biblical roles towards good governance. Matthew 2023 and says that nobody can become anything until God gives the, the defense of the gospel, the official partners of Vision Matthew 2023, it's powerful. The Bible said the way that sin made right to a man, the end may be death. Inspiring. God does not allow us, does not even permit us that somebody comes and just teach you a thing and you do not also go back, go back to back check back. the yeah, scripture. Exactly. Inciting. Because he is eternally a loving God. So lifting. And fight the Amalek. And he went, told him, it was the failure of Saul that made Saul to be rejected. Bible focus program you can't afford to me. They speak out when anything happens in the in the country on the state. They still speak out. Said what you are doing is bad. Uh, Elijah told uh, uh, Ahab. What you are doing is bad. The Defense of the Gospel, an interdenominational TV and radio program that features seasoned gospel ministers with the aim of providing answers to current social, political, and spiritual issues and the role of the church, sponsored by Remedy for Victims of Religious Persecution and Discrimination, RVRPND.
airing live on AKBC TV and radio and on Star Times Channel 113. Time is 2 p.m. every Thursday. Repeat broadcasts on Saturdays and on AKBC Radio by 4 p.m. and AKBC TV by 5 p.m. Watch live on Facebook at The Defense of the Gospel and on YouTube at G247 TV. Contact information, WhatsApp 0913-510-5983. The Defense of the Gospel, the official partners of Vision Matthew 2023. Welcome back to Studio Defense of the Gospel. And of course, this season is also here. So we are reflecting all of this together and in one topic, the unity of the church, that they might be one. And of course, how can they be one when they do not reflect on the reason why they should be one? And that's why Christ came to go through that crucibles and of course died and resurrected. Today, we have every reason to remain one. But are we one? Yeah, that's the question. And is it the problem of the leaders or the problem of the followers? Well, you, you are at liberty to join us as we progress. Our phone lines will be out anywhere from now. And uh, that will be after this particular question. I'd like to find out from my very respectable panelists what they think about this. Those that are preaching, are they preaching the truth? Are they bringing Christ to the fore? And if they are, the performances of the things that they're doing, some of the things they're doing, like we heard transactional and all of that, now, who should we blame? Is it the followers? Those that are following, are they following the right source? What is causing them to follow the way they are? Let God over to you. Where the cacas lie, there the eagles gather. Desperate humanity in depravity <laughs> will hold on to anything for survival. Anabar, you're speaking in riddles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is that um, the problems of humanity can cause men to go to any length for solution. And so the unscrupulous men of God take advantage of this desperate human beings that are genuinely in need of help. So the problem lies with us, the pastors. Both, not really the, the, um, the real pastors, because in every, uh, what do you call it, profession, if I use that word loosely, you have the professional, the, the real, and the quacks. the quacks. So the quacks are the one causing the confusion. Because to the quacks, their God is their belly. Mm. They are not seeking for the souls. Because no matter the kind of miracles we receive, if we don't receive the miracle of salvation... It is null and void. That's why Paul said, if only in this life we have hope in Christ Jesus, oh, we have men all men miserable. most miserable. In the days of the Christ, in John chapter 6, we look at verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles. In other words, if they saw the miracles and understood the principles, the power that worked the miracle, then they are in the light. But no, they went for transaction. And what is the transaction? Jesus said it here. But because ye eat of the loaf and were filled. The only thing the devil cannot do is to tell the truth and to live a righteous life. But when we talk about miracles, the devil can perform miracles. Yes, that's right. So, the Bible says, if it were possible to the devil, it will even deceive the saints. The very elect. The very elect. So you see that miracles does not necessarily announce the presence of Jehovah very in a ministry. Very 
because John the Baptist never performed the miracle. Mm. But in the testimony that is both in the gospel and in the epistles, the Bible testifies of his faith. The people in his day says, mm. John never did a miracle, mm. but all the things this man has said has come to pass. Mm. And then we, when we look in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, going down, we see that the Bible qualifies John the Baptist without a tangible miracle as a man of faith. So, what we gain from prayer lines, prayer meetings, uh, prayer consultations should not be all the motivation. The principal drive should be to know the truth. Every other thing will be added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Teach the people the kingdom of God. Don't pursue money as you solve their problems under God. God will cause a book of remembrance to be opened and the people will come back to say thank you. Rather than to have a consultation register where people are registered because they want to see pastor 5,000 Naira. Depending on, you know, a lot of things, exploitation. Uh, unfortunately, something happened in, uh, things should be uh, quarrested. And it was in the media. It was in both the main media and the social media. About desperation, where a lady who was looking for the fruit of the womb met a, a, a prophet. After the prophet has collected about 540,000 from her, he now told her, her womb is blocked. And uh, from the spirit, <laughs> it will take seven prophets to open mm. her womb. And she was number one. So the seven prophets lined up and raped that woman serially. The, the matter became a matter of the police. So the, all, the prof, all the prophets were rendered up. At the end, it was obvious that they were not true prophet. But they have brought a special on Christianity. Because they are past or past. How can, can God, and that woman becoming desperate, can God now use immorality to project his divinity? Mm. So that is the expression I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I, I get you. I get you. Let, let's, I, I know you want to add up something, but let's, let's allow our viewers and our listeners also join us now at this point. So, if you just join us, the program is still the defense of the gospel. And we have Alliance Director, if you can, please display that on the screen. For those of you that are listening to us through the device, the radio device, you can call us on the numbers 0803-486-1584. I take that again, 0803-486-1584 and 0807-108-5305. 0807-108-5305. One zero eight five three zero five. Those are the numbers that will gain the access to this live conversation right now in the studios. Oh eight oh three four eight six one five eight four and oh eight oh seven one zero eight five three zero five. And please, when you call us, do remember to turn down the volume of your set, whatever device you are listening to us from, and then go straight to the point. Tell us your name, where you're calling us from, and of course, ask your questions. Might not really be on what we're talking about, but as far as it concerns the Christendom, feel free to do so. And the man of God here will certainly, you know, um, contribute to your questions. Even if we can't answer all of them, I'm sure we can go a long way, more than 90%. I can assure you that. All right, so let the calls come and we're ready for you. Yes, man of God, you want to add something? Yes, just to add to what he was saying, the problem is both sides. The leaders who will not settle down and teach the truth. Mm. Um, in Jeremiah 3 verse 15, I will give you pastors, pastors after my, my heart, heart and they will teach you. They are to teach you and to make sure you come to that point of understanding. Mm. So the, the pastors who will not settle down and teach Sorry, the people. Sorry, I had to intercede a little bit. Let me see if I can get this color on. Hello, good afternoon. Can you turn down the volume of your set, please, so we can have a clear conversation? Thank you for joining us. Your name and location? My name is Jeremiah. I'm coming from New York. Jeremiah, your radio set or your TV set is still on the high side, but go ahead. All right. I heard what the pastor just said. 
Can you walk away from Jeremiah? Hold on. Can you walk away from that that vicinity? We don't need to hear you or hear ourselves on, please. All right, all right. That's good. Mm. Step out, step out, step out from your TV. Step out from. We're still having that echo sound, please. Or you turn the volume down. Go ahead. All right, just say what the pastor said. Jeremiah, now for you. Jeremiah, now for you. We're not hearing you now. We are hearing echo. Beautiful. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Now I want to ask you what the, the man of God said. Mm. You know when he heard the sick, the whole body is nothing. Okay. When he heard the sick, I talk about the Christians. You know, our people are desperate for things that do not work. They use the Bible for few tricks. They use it to make money. Mm. We are not supposed to be so. That's what you say. So, what I'm trying to say is that when the righteous is all in trouble, the people rejoice. But when a wicked person is leading, is a leader, the people mourn, they cry for help. Are you here? We can hear you, Jeremiah. Thank you for calling. We appreciate you. Let's give a uh, chance to artists. Okay. Yes, uh, it's exactly mm. what he said. What you said, uh, yeah, that's um, what I was saying. That's what he said. Yes, sorry, continue. So the problem is two sides. Mm. Now, pastors who will not settle down and teach the truth and get the people grounded mm. so that they don't be tossed to and fro. Okay, yeah. And people who will not sit down and learn, but will keep running after miracles. Mm, yeah. And they will not sit down and learn Christ. <laughs> so the problem <laughs> is. Who study the Bible? Yes. yes. Okay, let me, let me get this color on. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for joining us. Your name and location, man. I'm Veronica from Eastern Obolo. Veronica from Eastern Obolo. Ah, that's a far country. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead. I like, I enjoy this program that you always do on the radio. Thank you. So, uh, us. I want to join the man of God that just spoke in that. The word of, the unity of the church to based on the kingdom lifestyle as yeah, uh, John the Baptist preached. Mm. about the kingdom of God. And the preaching of Jesus was about the kingdom, the kingdom lifestyle. The people nowadays are preaching, even arguing Bible every day, even on radio. Some of the programs, sometimes I will off it. Because they keep on arguing Bible, preaching against the, against the tithe, against the communion, against uh, everything. Just adding Bible every day, every day. And people are calling, praising him on the radio. Sometimes I will off it. So if all the, the Christians will focus on preaching on the lifestyle, how we live our life uh, to meet with our Lord, I think that will bring the unity of the church. They keep on promoting uh, against, uh, preaching against the Bible, adding every day, every day. All right. So we focus on the, the truth. Yes, on the truth. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Veronica. I, I, I appreciate you. What she's trying to say there mm. also could imply we preaching against ourselves. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. We preaching against ourselves because we, we see that a lot mm. in the Christian this is. Yes. Where pastors preach against the other pastor, mm. this church preach, preach against this other church, mm. and we we do that openly and. And we even preach against the principles of the gospel. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have so much time, or very quickly. Um, let's see if we can run off this and then end it as it is. Men of God, just before I let you leave the studio, what would be your advice to the church, especially in seasons like this? How can we function and stay in unity, irrespective of what might be? Let me begin with you. Hmm. My take is to search for the truth, which is not difficult to search, the word of God. Find the truth, hold it both with both hands, and do not sell it. Let us rise with the word, because that is the final authority, that is what will land us safe on Canaan's land. Any other thing that is outside the world and we major in it will definitely not make us to stand and would 
continue to fester the disunity of the church. Yeah, three things I would say. Oh, first, brotherhood. Let's see ourselves as brethren, as brothers. Whether you are from Igbo, you are from Hausa, you are from any church, we must see ourselves as brothers. Right. To love, which is the essence of Calvary, it was love. Let's love ourselves, let's stand by ourselves, let's cover ourselves, sacrifice for ourselves. And then thirdly, peace. He, he says in Hebrews 12 verse 14, follow peace with all men, with all men. No need fighting and talking against ourselves and hating ourselves and planning evil against ourselves pastor against pastor, church against church and sometimes you see the evil that is in our heart against ourselves mm -hmm. uh, those those are the things we don't need again so let's let's have let's be at peace with each other love ourselves and see ourselves as brothers praise god thank you very much really appreciate you uh pastor victor okobas is you know pastor show foundation apostolic christian ministry thank you so much for, for coming we My appreciate pleasure. the program Reverend Lubo Omo, Senior Pastor, Freedom Foundation Ministry. Thank you so much also for gracing the occasion Thank and you. the program for us today. Thank we appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Um, as always, we'll take at least 30 seconds to pray and ask the Lord to help us, help Nigeria, help the leadership of Nigeria, and that of our Kwaibu, and of course, the Church of God to stay in unity as it is. I'll allow you please to pray for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the gift of life and the blessings of Easter. Thank you, Father, for allowing Jesus to come to die for us. We pray for our country, Nigeria. We ask that you will keep us in peace and unity. We ask that you will lead our leaders. We pray for Aquabum State. We ask for peace in Aquabum State. We ask that you will lead uh, our, our those that are at the hem of affairs in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for the church. We pray for peace. We pray for progress. We pray for prosperity. And we pray for understanding amongst ourselves. Let your hand of blessing be upon the church in Aquabum State in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's it on the program today. Many thanks for staying tuned. Looking forward to having you again next Thursday. Always here. My name is Etuk Ikon, and it's a bye-bye from us. God bless Nigeria. God bless Aquaibo. Amen. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of the Father. Matthew chapter 20 verses 23. Vision Matthew 2023 is an interdenominational TV and radio program featuring seasoned gospel ministers and Christian leaders within and outside Aquaibum with the aim of positioning the body of Christ to play our expected biblical roles towards good governance. Matthew 2023 that says that nobody can become the defense of the gospel, the official partners of Vision Matthew 2023, it's powerful. The Bible said the way that sin made right to a man, the end may be death. Inspiring. God does not allow us, does not even permit us that somebody comes and just teach you a thing and you do not also go back, go back to back check back. the scripture. Exactly. Inciting. Because he is eternally a loving God. So lifting. And fired the Amalek. And he went, told him, it was the failure of Saul that made Saul to be rejected. Bible focus program you can't afford to me. They speak out when anything happens in the in the country on the state. They still speak out. Said what you are doing is bad. Uh, Elijah told uh, uh, Ahab. What you are doing is bad. The Defense of the Gospel, an interdenominational TV and radio program that features seasoned gospel ministers with them of providing answers to current social, political, and spiritual issues and the role of the church, sponsored by Remedy for Victims of Religious Persecution and Discrimination, RVRPND. Airing live on AKBC TV and radio and on Star Times Channel 113. Time is 2 p.m. every Thursday. Repeat broadcasts on Saturdays and on AKBC Radio by 4 p.m. and AKBC TV by 5 p.m. Watch live on Facebook at The Defense of the Gospel and on YouTube at G247 TV. Contact information, WhatsApp 0913-510-5983. The Defense of the Gospel. The official partners of Vision Matthew 2023.